I spent 13 weeks in the most grueling boot camp in the United States military. Now, for the first time ever, I'm giving you the full breakdown of Marine Corps boot camp week by grueling week. Seriously, this is the only breakdown you're gonna need. You can't do anything! I said. Because he's not okay! Because half his leg just got blown off! And I he's said. scared! And he doesn't know what's happening! Got lies on your hands! Think you have what it takes to be a U.S. Marine? Let's find out. For over 248 years, recruits have gone to boot camp not knowing what the next day will bring. Not anymore. I'm pulling back the veil so you can see what each week of training looks like so you know what to expect. So how do you take someone like me and mold them into a Marine? Boot camp. 13 weeks of pure intensity. It's broken down into four phases, each one designed to push you further than you ever thought possible. The further you go, the tougher it gets. It's a constant uphill battle leading to the ultimate challenge. My leg! The Crucible. The Crucible may be the ultimate test, but this is where the journey starts. Phase one, week one, receiving, where civilians become recruits. Get out my butt right now. I just had surgery on my mouth, so I look and sound a lot worse than I usually do, but that doesn't stop me from making content for you guys. Yeah, I probably shouldn't be yelling like that though. Although I went to Paris Island, this applies to San Diego, pretty much the same thing. Bro, you've been talking for five minutes, you got 13 weeks left to cover, I'm getting bored, so I know the people watching this are getting bored. Look, look, he yawning, bro. Your viewers are getting bored. Hurry up. Rude. Rude, just rude. And which one of you guys were yawning, man? Is it that bad? I'm sorry, y'all, let's just go ahead and start. The second you get off the bus onto those yellow footprints, you are now in receiving. Is that if you leave my base without proper authority, we will hunt you down and throw you in jail. They're gonna yell at you, read some rules, yell at you some more, give you a haircut, make you do paperwork, then expect to move from building to building, place to place in the middle of the night, not knowing what time of day it is, like you're a prisoner inside here. This is a part of the process where you're like, yo, why did I sign up for this? So don't feel bad if you're confused or you don't know what's going on and you're supposed to feel this way. And you heard the man. We got 13 weeks to cover, so let's just go ahead and get into form. The first couple days is called forming or inoculations. This is just a fancy way of saying, yeah, things are bad, but we're preparing you for when they get worse. Think of forming as your introduction into the Marine Corps lifestyle. You're gonna learn the basics, how to make your rack, how to clean the squad bay, go to the chow hall, how to march, also known as close order drill. You're gonna drink some water, drink some more water. You're gonna drink a lot of water, man. Probably an unhealthy amount of water. For an example, in my platoon, we had a man named Van. Now, Van was a very small man, but Van drank as much water as Van can. The drill instructor made Van carry a fan, and Van was determined, so he carried that fan for as long as he can. Look, long story short, the dude peed all over himself. It was gross, but I got empathy, so I became a fan of Van. Look, I made that rhyme, but that's actually a true story. They will make you drink until you pee yourself. Enjoy it while you can. Moving on. A very important part of this forming week is that you're gonna be issued a drill instructor. He is not your drill instructor. Do not take this dude for granted. He is your forming drill instructor and he is the nicest guy that you're gonna meet your entire time at boot camp. After a few days, you're gonna be introduced to your actual drill instructor and this is where things get really fun. This is officially your first week of actual training. I'm not covering boot camp day to day. Too much, we don't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Instead, I'm focusing on the core training events that occur each week so you know what to expect. And I'm gonna share some tips and tricks along the way to help you prepare. You're gonna meet your loving drill instructors. Stand straight and look at me. My name is Stan Stormer. training is gonna intensify, so physical fitness is gonna pick up, but there's a big focus on academics. What do I mean by that? You're gonna go to a place called the Recruit Training Facility. They're gonna give you a bunch of PowerPoints, lectures on military history. I'm not gonna get into all the details here. You're gonna be sitting like this. Left hand, left knee, right hand, right knee, back straight, mouth shut, eye sir. Get used to that, you're gonna hear it a lot. And between you and me, uh, you're gonna have a hard time staying awake. It's boring as hell. I already know right now, some of you gonna be looking like this. Bob and Ghost Cock. Occasionally, the doors are gonna open, drill instructors are gonna run in, grab like three or four people, take them outside and punish them for like 10 minutes. Oh, I don't, I don't know why they do it, that's just what they do. They're drill instructors. This is boot camp, it's fun, remember? When I say that physical fitness increases, I mean this is where they're gonna start pushing your endurance by taking you on very long hikes. The first one is relatively short, I think it's about four miles. Dude, it sucks. And when I say hike, I mean Marine Corps style. You're not just hiking in the woods with your best friends and your backpacks and your tents just ready for a good day. Hell no. 
no. This is boot camp, not summer camp. It's intense, it's fast paced, it hurts, and it's gonna push you to your limit. But just think, this is the short version. It gets worse from here. Woo. The next thing in this week is the confidence course. Grab your canteen to go. You failed this event. May I just have one more shot, sir? What did I just say? Aye, sir. What did I just say? Aye, sir. Let's go. Aye, sir. And it's just like the name sounds. It's to build confidence as well as teamwork. There's a big focus on team building here as well as gaining some strength and endurance. If you're scared of heights, bro, you won't be after this, I guess. But don't worry too much because they're not gonna let you get hurt. It's gonna be fine and a little bit fun once you do it once or twice. Here's a little side tip. There's so many recruits running around and there's so much chaos that you may be able to skip some of these parts. Here's an example. I was actually running to start one of the courses. Drill instructor stops me and he's like, did you finish that part already? This recruit already finished that part, sir. I didn't. What the hell are you doing then? You're supposed to be in that line. Hi, right, sir. Uh, but don't get caught lying because <laughs> you're going to run that thing like 10 times. To close out this week, you're going to do an initial drill inspection. Initial drill is the first graded event of recruit training. It allows the, the regiment as a whole to take a look at exactly what the recruits have learned up to this point regarding close order drill. It allows the drill instructor to showcase a lot of the effort that they've put into these recruits. There's a lot of work that goes into it, a lot of behind the scenes things, tightening up drill and ensuring that you're the best that you can be before you step on that parade deck. It's a fun, exciting time, but on the other end of it, there's a lot of work that goes into it to ensure that you can put the best product out there. The recruits are they're anxious, they're excited, their adrenaline is through the roof, and those are all the things that, as a unit leader, you can see when you're out there. The better you do, the less you're gonna get destroyed. If you make your drill instructor look bad, enjoy, moving on. Next up is the obstacle course. Similar to the confidence course, but none of the obstacles are super tall. They're just designed to push your agility, your endurance, and your strength. You're gonna run them a bunch. Not gonna get into specifics, but this is what it looks like. Next up is the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, or McMap. Prepare to see. Prepare to see, I say. Go now, move. My name is Staff Sergeant Kale, Senior General Instructor for Platoon 1030, Bravo Company, first recruit training time. So today the recruits are going to be learning some chokes as well as counters and chokes uh, to include the rear choke, the figure four variation, uh, counter the front choke, counter the bear hug. Um, this is going to allow the recruits to better themselves, not only physically, a lot of these recruits have never been in any type of physical engagement. So it's going to develop that confidence that they need uh, to handle any situation that they come through with. Um, it allows for them just in addition to lay the foundation uh, for follow-on training. It starts here in recruit training with the tan belt, but as they begin to their secondary schools and the, the, the fleet marine force, you know, they'll be able to build on the skills that they learn. This is a basic martial arts type of training. Nothing too crazy, a couple of strikes, couple of throws. You're gonna do this periodically throughout boot camp. If you're big into martial arts, you might not like this because it is very basic. However, if you wanna progress further in this, whenever you get to your unit, you can do a lot more McMap training. Next up, swim crawl.
And I know a lot of people get really concerned and worried about swim qual. It's not as bad as you think. You're gonna jump off of a diving board and learn the fundamentals of how to survive in the water. My biggest advice is to get comfortable in the water now. If you're able, go to a swimming pool, learn how to doggy paddle, learn how to float, and learn how to be comfortable underneath the water for a short period of time, and you'll be just fine. Closing this week out, you're gonna have a uniform inspection, which is your attention to detail. That's what they're looking for here, is that you're listening, following instructions, and making sure that your uniforms are within regulation. This is your first introduction to it, but you're gonna do this your entire time in the Marine Corps. Get to know this process and just learn to love it. Hey, look, real quick, I messed this part up. I got so excited for phase three. I said phase two instead of phase three. So anything going forward, this is phase three and phase four. All right, I love you guys. Woo, phase two, you've made it this far and you're going to feel amazing because you're gonna look different and you're gonna feel different. Look at this picture for an example. Phase one recruit, phase two recruit. This is an interesting phase because most of this time is spent in a different location. You're gonna hike out to the rifle ranges where you're gonna be living until this phase is done. Uh, the importance of having the Marines come out to the rifle range is pretty much just to familiarize themselves with the M16 or the M4 that are issued and to also uh, complete their annual qualifications with that rifle. The biggest importance for Marines to walk away from the rifle range is knowing that they did better than what they shot before. You always want to look for small details that you can improve yourself on. So that, that's what we're here for is just to help. So. You should come to the rifle range expecting to want to qual higher than you did last year. Well, the different courses of fire, we got table one and table two for your annual qualifications. So for table one, they'll shoot at the 200 yard line. They'll do a slow fire and they'll do a rapid fire. They'll move back to the 300 yard line. They'll do a rapid fire and a slow fire as well. And then they'll move back to the 500 yard line and do a slow fire in the prone. Table two, you shoot moving targets from the 200 yard line and you shoot targets that are static in the pits at a closer distance. It's a combat-oriented shoot for Table 2. The Marines make it look so easy to shoot because they're well-rounded and they listen, and they listen to what the coaches are telling them. What makes the Marine Corps rifle range in Yuma so special is the strength of our coaches. They spend a year out here, and they're well-versed, and they're great instructors. Learning the fundamentals of marksmanship, that is the one thing that they should always uh, be reminded of once they leave. Make sure you, you uh, retain all that knowledge on your, on your uh, fundamentals, your marksmanship here, and go from either unk to a marksman to a sharpshooter or to an expert. Oh, uh, yeah, one part is horrible. It's called Grass Week. Grass Week is as interesting as it sounds. You're gonna sit on the grass Indian style with a little sling wrapped around your arm, cutting off circulation for hours on end while you stare at a barrel, practicing basic fundamental marksmanship. Even though Grass Week does suck, take it very seriously because it's gonna help you when you go to qualify with your rifle, and that rifle score is gonna stay with you for about a year. And if you shoot dookie, you're gonna look dookie. For the lowest score, you get something called the pizza box. Doesn't look very good, but if you shoot expert, you get this bad right here. Once you've qualified with your rifle, you're going to do something called table two, which is more combat focused. So targets are shorter range. There's moving targets. It's kind of fun. Still graded, but not as intense. Once you're done with this, it gets fun. And I actually mean it this time. Basic warrior training. This is what you came here for. BWT or basic warrior training is like the coolest thing ever. This is the meat and potatoes of boot camp. Recruits are trained in different styles of hand-to-hand -hand combat. To see is that straight thrust, you understand? Yes, sir. Oh, Come on, sir. Aye, sir. A key aspect of their martial arts training is fighting with pugil sticks. Who killed that opponent? You understand? Aye, the pugil stick techniques are intended to mirror those used in combat while using a bayonet. Here in the Marine Corps, we have a kind of a little ditty that means red is dead. So that red side is supposed to emulate the actual knife portion of the actual bayonet mounted on the weapon. So anything that you strike with that red tip, nine times or 10 are either gonna be incapacitated or laid to rest. Honestly, it gives them an opportunity to blow off a little steam. They have a lot of pent up aggression, especially towards maybe their drill instructors. They're out there, they're actually doing what they feel like they signed up to do, which is learn how to combat the enemy. Side note, our drill instructors actually destroyed us a lot more because he said he knew that officers weren't hanging out so he could do whatever he wanted to us. 
So yeah, you might get punished more, but you get to do fun stuff. Fair trade off, right? One of those is bayonet training. Long story short, you're gonna run around with a bayonet stabbing a bunch of tires while you're screaming kill. Get out all your aggression and just enjoy the experience. It's actually kind of fun. Think of BWT like a really painful field trip. They're gonna march you all over the place for miles and miles on end, stopping at different training events like the Repel Tower. I don't oh God. No, I'm not, please. We are now. Good. Good. Any recruit with a fear of heights gets the chance to conquer that fear, courtesy of this 47-foot tall tower. Recruits must rappel down using two different methods. For me, the rappel tower was hard because I sort of had a fear of heights. Grab below my right hand with your right hand. You have to trust the rope. So there's nothing to be worried about. You'll be safe all the time. Can you please help me? I'm trying to help you. So I don't want to go down. Recruits with a phobia of heights have little choice but to face their fear. Look, the rappel tower is super intimidating. I get it. If you don't like heights, it's going to suck. But it's very short. It's probably an hour or so. You go up, you do one rappel, you go back up, you do a second one, you're done. Biggest tip I can give you for the rappel tower is to trust the equipment and listen to the instructors. They're not going to let you get hurt. And there's a safety guy all the way at the bottom, making sure that you don't just come falling down and smacking into the ground like a bag of potatoes. After you're done with the rappel tower, you move into the gas chamber. I'm a weirdo. I love the gas chamber. Let me know in the comments if you've been to boot camp and what you thought about the gas chamber. Did you like it or hate it? Let me know. One of the most dreaded parts of training is the gas chamber. Crush, 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 crush. Where recruits are exposed to CS gas, more commonly known as tear gas. Once the recruits enter the chamber, they break the seals of their gas masks. You go in, you feel it instantly hit your skin. You just feel burning. Ah! Say something to me now! Feels like those few minutes felt like an hour. After around five minutes, the recruits are free. But the pain endures. There's no real way to prepare for the gas chamber, but my best advice is know that you're not gonna die. Okay, I know that sounds weird, but you go into it knowing that yes, it's going to be painful, it's gonna be an unpleasant experience, but it's not gonna kill you. It might feel like you're gonna die, but you won't. I'll do my best to explain this experience so you know what to expect. You have your gas mask on and you walk into a real small dark room, it looks horrifying, with just enough light so you can see what you're about to breathe in. And chances are your gas mask is already broken, so the second you walk in, you're gonna start feeling it. You're gonna do a a series of different events they're gonna walk you through it big thing here is to not panic if you panic you're gonna stay in longer and there's probably gonna be somebody in there with you that's gonna be freaking out so much you're gonna be in there for like five or ten minutes the best way I could describe it like breathing in fire it's just incredibly hot your lungs will feel like they're burning the entire time your eyes are gonna water your nose is gonna run it's gonna be miserable you go outside rinse off your stuff and you're on your way man on a plus side if you got a lot of sinuses man you're gonna be breathing so much better after this You'll see. You're gonna leave BWT and go back to your barracks and then you're gonna prepare for the final challenge, the crucible. For the Crucible, there's hundreds of videos out there that cover this a lot more in depth than I can down to the actual events. Instead, I'm gonna give you the behind the scenes and some insider tips to help you prepare and get through it. Tip number one is rationing your meals. You're only gonna have a couple of MREs or meals ready to eat, also known as meals rejected by Ethiopians. Even though the food isn't the best, you only have a little bit to get through. Ration this. I've seen way too many dudes eat one, two, three MREs on their very first day and then suffered the entire rest of the crucible because they didn't have any food left over. Open up all three of your MREs and put the main courses into one bag with your MRE heaters and your drink pouch. Put your crackers, peanut butter, any of that stuff into the second bag. Third bag, your condiments. That little bag of paper towels, gum, hot sauce, whatever, throw it in that third bag. If you're unfamiliar with MREs, they put your main meal in one tiny pouch. Once it's opened, you're not saving it. So I recommend eating one meal first thing when you wake up, that main course, done nothing else. As the day progresses, go ahead and chew on a piece of bubble gum because you're going to get hungry and this will help you satisfy that urge for the time being. At night, have something like peanut butter or something that's going to hold you over until the morning. Don't overdo it here. Just eat the peanut butter right before you go to sleep and you're good. 
Trust me on this. Tip number two is dealing with sleep deprivation. You're not gonna get a lot of sleep, so you need to make that time count. If you have to, start learning meditation or sleeping techniques now, so the second you hit the rack, you're out. Very quick tip, it'll save you. The third tip is to strategize before you begin. Each one of these events is more about strategy than strength. So for an example, you might go to a course that says you have to carry two cans of ammo up over a bar without touching the red sides and you can only have one person at a bar at a time, whatever. The objective is to get through it as fast as possible. The faster you finish, the more you rest. But at the same time, you don't wanna fail because if you keep failing, you have to reset. The more you reset, the more exhausted you become. The more exhausted you become, the more you start arguing and bickering with each other. Next thing you know, you're spending two hours trying to get over a bar, you're exhausted by the next challenge. Instead, plan accordingly. Think about how you're gonna do this, find the strengths and weaknesses of each person in your team, and then carry out the plan. If you fail, figure out what you did wrong, readjust, and try it again. My last bit of advice is to enjoy the experience. You only go to the Crucible one time. This is one time ever that you're gonna be at boot camp. Enjoy every moment that you have. I know it's gonna be rough. I know it's gonna suck, but you will make it. If I can make it, you can make it. My last bit of advice is to just enjoy this experience you only go to the crucible one time. You only go to boot camp one time. To be honest, man, I look back and I miss it. Also, if you're still deciding on whether or not the military is right for you, or you're trying to figure out what branch you want to join, the video's right here. If it doesn't pop up, it's on the channel and I highly suggest you check it out. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything or something's out of place. Recruit training does change over the years and I went to boot camp about 10 years ago, so I might have missed some things. Let me know in the comments below. And remember, I work for you guys, so please like, share, subscribe to the channel to help us grow. We can't do it without you. And until next time, see ya. Love you guys.